Hi, my name is Kevin. Good luck. Hi, my name is Kevin. Good luck. Hi, homework. Hi, my name. Wow, later. Oh, excellent. So, uh, I'm going to read out the first slide of the version of this round reads, this house believes religious leaders should primarily focus on individual circumstances rather than community-based reasons for addressing acts of religious extremism. Without further ado, I'd like to invite the Prime Minister to speak to that version. Yes, Your Honor, can I say that in a sentence? Um, his house believes that religious leaders should primarily focus on individual circumstances. Yep, you are the person, thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, pronouns will be data. Uh, you guys are single, right? Yep. Okay, so, single, uh, feel free to use uh, basic features or something. Or, Most likely the form of this 
discussion to be creating a tension between one religious uh, religious section to another religious section. I mean, at worst, we believe in a world that we see in Shia versus Sunni in Asia, for example, but most uh, cases will end up in a dead talk with addressing actually some individual to what to believe. I mean, in future, is it true that I should follow Christian, Christian reform, or is it true that I should follow the, the Catholic role, for example, because they are using the same Holy Bible, but clearly a different inter interpretation of the process as well. To what extent tolerance should be, i.e., should be co tolerance until, uh, uh, but still justify Al Maida, for example, don't choose the non Muslim leader or something along that line. Because inherently, religion something that uh, has something that need, uh, can be tolerant in a different way, and it's up to interpretation in terms of what kind of thing that you must tol tolerate. It leads into the discussion being unproductive, not only for the religious actionists, but then keeping existing religion with the pluralism inside of it, they try to get the spotlight to say that I am the one that you should follow this, uh, by these kind of religious actionists because you are the one that is correct or something like that. Like. The conclusion is very simple. The community based reason, unlike that, we have a unified way to discuss, has created further tension and further right. actionism in the process. As well, closing, yes. The mystic claim interpretations are not changing either way. We are talking about normative people who start normative and because in your side they get validation, they start actively searching for the extreme interpretations. Correct, but that is basically the reason why you cannot take the discussion that way, you cannot take actually uh, solve extremism at all. That way, your religion will be seen as action as well, because these people are going to be spot like that say say that. Islam, for example, or Catholic or Christian cannot solve this action is inside of their religion inherently. How can a government side eventually solve this? What is the success parameter that you eventually push? The mechanism that we push here is in terms of secular reasons, that not uh, that uh, secular reasons, that most of these individuals have nothing to report, that the world already betrayed them. Hence, the one that they seek is eventually seeking for afterlife uh, comprehension, i.e., heaven and hell, for example, because this is the only a blessing. This is the only way to come out from the cruelty of this world. For example, i.e., the spiritual of economy, look at, uh, look at uh, like, taking a look on people being help, uh, help, for example, something along that line. And so, the problem that we want to solve to catch you is why they didn't like to be free. This is to be free because of four reasons. Number one, this is a living experience that they experience day by day, means that it's likely for them to be relatable to what we push here, to what we promoted by this kind of religion. I.e., giving them money, for example, or like, giving them religious structure, or so be more in the process as well, something that they are agreed upon. But secondly, it's also in terms of their life condition, i.e. the desperation of economy probably means that it's far easier for you to give them money to eventually them understand the issue. Because now you are being seen as the God that really are coming to the world, as the second coming of Jesus, for example, because most of the time they don't see the God because they always live in this kind of desperation. And this is where the momentum can be used with religion to eventually eradicate the religious extremism by saying that we are not just talking, but you are wrong, but we are the one that coming to the Ground, helping you on the ground, and we are the interpretation and the real image of Jesus that try to help you in this kind of world. But partly, it's also using the same narrative of why they opt in from the religion to begin with, that they are opting to religion because they are indeed sovereign, because they are indeed trying to seek for something that helped them. And this is the way religious community and religious leader can eventually touch their heart, touch the way they eventually think, for example, and breaking down the echo chamber that already exists inside of their head. Conclusion is very simple. It's far easier not only for discussion, but getting a deal in the process, pulling them from extreme to start to see the modernist as a fellow brother, for example. Because right now what they see is that the modern is the one that is pulled there, that they don't care about our circumstances and only pushing interpretation where it's convenient toward the modern. And this is where we say to them that we are willing to listen to you, that you are in it sovereign, and we care toward you, and you are not the one that wrong, but the world surrounding you is eventually the one and more. And this is then the relapse of logic and telling the correct way and telling the more modern interpretation to this kind of individual. The conclusion is very simple, this is the requisite of any kind of discussion, any kind of process to eventually come. To post this, I have one point. Jalan Jalan Naikarta, don't forget to eventually buy send me. Alhamdulillah, so the partner, for for my for send me.
issue OG is trying to solve. S systemic level extremism exists probably on both sides of the world because there are other factors outside of religious belief that influence this. These are factors such as low controlling areas where ISIS operates. But notice that most of the issues and most of the scandals that we can address and which actually create inter-religious tensions are ones which are local and ones which are, ones which are done with individuals and in the aftermath of which those individuals often do not live to tell the tale. Notice that in the after, when you address the aftermath, you cannot prevent this very same thing that happened. Meaning that the communities are already in conflict after this aftermath of shootings. Notice what happened at the aftermath of the Christchurch shooting on Moscow or, or after the bombings in Sri Lanka. People already got their tensions significantly fired up and it, uh, the media itself, outside of the religious narratives and the outside of the religious discourse space, was significantly flooded with very bad interpretations on what these individuals have been doing. And this is also significantly true to the minds of those communities which are significantly greedy. But also notice, Mental health is already addressed on both sides of the debate by actors such as the state, such as the uh, significantly independent media which exists almost always and everywhere in the world, by schools, by uh, public health officials. But what OG does not provide to us is the comparative on why this addressing by the church specifically leads to a significantly higher impact. Notice that people can, who can go to church, they probably also have significantly outside sources of media such as newspapers and <coughs> public media, thus we do not get what is the comparative if we are told this by the the major. Like notice first of all that this enables us when you focus on community practice and when you focus specifically on reconciliation between communities and promoting tolerance, this enables us to reconcile. Notice that in order to say we cannot follow the scripture, you must say I am wrong. The other communities which have been grieving the, due to the fact that they have been harmed by these acts of religious violence need to hear this from you. Because if you push only falls on specific individuals, you will never as a community admit that you are wrong. But notice that other communities upon which harm has been done feel that they're uh, being harmed by the whole community outside of them. Why? First of all, because they just do not know this individual person who committed this harm. They always, you always assume that if they are a member of a group that has historically opposed to you, like for significant amounts of time, such as uh, Christianity to Islam or Shia Islam to Sunni Islam, that this is something which is a systemic act done due to, uh, only in order to propagate your own specific types of religious belief. Regardless of whether this is the truth, this is going to be the majority perception of the people who are actually harmed. And also notice that in, this, uh, uh, in the narratives of opening government, this is probably going to get misconstrued by the people who are exactly telling you what, this, uh, what the trauma for us that this person went through means. Why? First of all, there is a significant problem of detachment of people who are individual uh, religious members of community to the individuals who committed the crime. Notice that uh, uh, church officials, like from New Zealand to Canada, needed to address the Christchurch shooting regardless of how much information they had on this matter. Notice that they, on our side, have significantly larger information on reconciliation and on the, the, the correct teaching of scripture because this is the thing that which they have been doing all of their lives and on which they are able to convince the largest amount of people due to the fact that people already buy into uh, religious tolerance through scripture which uh, makes a significant part of uh, itself going contrary to what open opposition said. But also notice that in most religious, most religious publics are distrustful towards modern leftist narratives of systemic inequality and of systemic racism. And notice that they have been programmed to be distrustful of this by the modern media, by their own experiences as persons living and feeling as a conservative. Notice that when they hear the words Caesar poverty, systemic injustice, they often correlate them to well, leftist folk bullshit, which they then perceive significantly negative, and thus they when uh, continue on blaming the whole other community for as this concept. But also, this also ends up promoting to an extent retributive acts and punishments towards both these individuals and other members of the community. So why? First of all, because you often generalize these other members of the community, thinking that they are involved in their own suffering, but more importantly, you work on worse relations with them because you overly generalize their own uh, behavior. I'll take both of you. Oh, yeah. Which version of Islam is correct? Nobody knows, but do you know what version of Islam everybody follows? Probably the most peaceful one because it has been not able to, not angry the most amount of people that live around you, it has been able to carefully integrate into the modern world, and it has been able to like promote peace and well-being in the majority of its adherents. Notice that most people, are, most uh, Muslims are appalled when they hear about ISIS doing harms on Christians. Notice that most Muslims are also appalled upon bombings of Christ's church 
the, uh, uh, like um, on the message of crisis and also on bombings of Sri Lanka, the Muslim extremists. Notice that most of them like peace. Why? Because every human likes peace to a certain extent because they always believe that it brings prosperity to themselves and not to everybody else. And notice that religions also have built-in mechanisms of tolerance, such as in Islam, uh, the Christians and Hebrews being referred to as the people of the book who must not be harmed in the in cases where it must not be done so. The problem is that yeah. what, like, most people just perceive that it, it is never the case that anybody else should be harmed due to the fact that we all believe in a common humanity even outside of our own religious identities. Meaning that everybody perceives a terrorist attack as a significant harm on another community. Yes? Hitler is the objectively best job that I've ever had. You think everyone likes to take the most of the people that have been in the Yes, people always have their practice. Notice that the most radical members of the communities are always going to be the ones who are most detached from the community itself. The only way to bring them back into the community is to focus on the commonalities that you share with them. And the biggest commonality you share and the one commonality you have the largest influence of is religious text is adherent to this very same religious text. Because notice, the largest authorities, like the popes, like uh, the ulema in the Islam generally, which are in charge of the whole religious life in each state, are almost always going to be moderate due to the fact that they have to appease some sorts of governments, or just in general, the moderate people are the most popular, even churches, they will address this in the most moderate issue possible, meaning that they are going to probably uh, call on common, on common identities and on common messaging in order to bring out even those who are the most extreme. Why? Right? Because they still, in their hearts, see that these people have a significant authority. The Pope is direct conduit from her to God, and thus, if you want to be a member of God's chosen people, you need to follow the Pope in Catholic Christianity, or in Islam, you have to follow their own specific authority. Or if not, you have to follow the Quran. But the Quran has significant amounts of interpretations, some of which are seen as terrible, and some of which are seen as not terrible. But notice that the most terrible interpretations are almost always the most moderate due to the fact that they have a tendency to spread the farthest, and also notice that they have the tendency to uh, stay the longest because they are just not accurate in other communities which do not resource in less profit in general. Notice that you need reconciliation between communities, especially in multi faith areas, especially in areas where these types of incidents are significantly prone, and this needs two things. Number one, the recognition of personal failure, and secondly, the ability to reconnect with others and ability to spread tolerance. Thank you. Thank you, Nero, for the opposition. I'd like to get this time to the spot. Religion to have open to interpretation. This means their discussion can never work. 
Thirdly, what mm -hmm. happens in an opposition is you continue to blame the community, right? which in the process either harms and blames innocent religious communities that have no links at all towards these uh, towards these religious extremists, or two, you then invite them to debate and try to compete on what is the most correct interpretation of religion, which they inherently can. It is a huge burden on them because religion inherently cannot do that. Then they say, ah, the most modern ones are most popular. Good, alhamdulillah, that happens. But that is not what we're talking about. We're talking about religious extremists who have been detached from those moderate incentives, who cannot practice on a day-to-day -day basis, whose houses have been blown up, so they can't focus on the moderate interpretation because the only salvation they see is the afterlife that is promised to them via this extreme interpretation, so they cannot get that. Lastly, only, well, they want us only blame one person. We, we're pretty sure this is a misinterpretation of the nuance on our side. What we need by like, individual reasons is not like a person, but the reason why an individual goes to extreme lengths which is secular reasons, and that's what we fix. Then, um, in the NPTO, I was talking about affirming extremists. One, this is parallel because of all the mechanisms we say. They can never truly debunk the idea of extremism because it exists within religion anyway. Second, on their side, when you try, you invite more conflict because you try to tell them that they're kafir, which means you are also going to be called kafir as a religious leader in that process. Thirdly, on government, our comparison is that we are going to give them these offerings of like secular solutions, which are more likely to be accepted. Moving on to the uh, comparative analysis. Why is it that on our side of the house it is much more likely? One, it's because what is the flag, what is the definition of a good secular solution or like a good reason for people to have lives? It's universal because what the threshold is of what is enough money? Do you have a home or not? Are you healthy enough? Do you have enough food? That is something even the latest extremists will agree on because they also want to enjoy life because it is approximate for them. Second of all, we can also frame it as, oh, Look at all the people around the world, look at the Islam Brotherhood, they're willing to give you aid, donation, and food, because this is a blessing from God. And so it's still a way for us to show that this is a religious way, uh, these real life and secular um, secular offers are still framed in a way that is inherently attractive from a religious point of view. That means it is still possible on our side. We're waiting for this on the likelihood. We say the nuance of this is, uh, the nuance of religion is open to interpretation. So their community base uh, attempt needs to somehow find the best one and somehow convince the people who have already been detached from the modern view and that the modern ones is correct. This gap that they have to bridge, that this uh, this gap that they have to bridge, is a huge burden on their side. On our side, we already told you that the secular reasons are still going to be bought by the religious extremists, which is the prerequisite for any form of discussion. Second of all, this is specific to extremist groups already, which means they have already been attacked. They cannot make generic arguments about religions and how they work in a uh, in just a universal random way. Before I move on to the extension and the other issue, I'll take a yeah, rather than normative middle religious person has the courage and the ability to say to his religious leader, you are wrong. Um, the problem is in that process, if you're going to talk to that, or, uh, if you're going to discuss that with religious extremists, it's still a burden on your side. Why would they will listen to you? And when they do listen to you, why would the discussion turn out something that pushes them towards moderation? Instead, you will invite conflict and you will invite the extremists to prove themselves the most correct in that discussion. So we say it doesn't happen on your side. The extension of the issue is one, on our side of the house, we get more coordination between religions or even within the same religion. Because on opposition, you invite people to debate on what is the most correct interpretation, which is inherently going to be fight, uh, fighting with one another because you want to prove you're the most correct one towards these extremists, so you're not going to be able to get anything. On government, we can make sure that the entire Islamic Brotherhood, for example, can agree on giving these secular solutions or individual-based solutions because all because all sects, even when you're, whether or not you're Islam, in the Middle East, in Asia, in Southeast Asia, all of them universally agree that people better have money, people better have a home, people have better have they better lives. So that means we get much more unity and likelihood to get support on our side. This means that these secular solutions also extend beyond the religion. Because we say in this debate, these religious leaders don't have a fiat of like automatically being able to execute on whatever the discussion is with the extremists. They need support from external parties. And so the optics to make sure that our discussion and the solution we're willing to offer has to be secular. Why? Because on their side, people who are secular cannot engage because either A, they literally cannot engage within religious discussions because secular people don't know what is correct and don't know what is the correct interpretation of Islam because they don't engage with it. Second of all, they cannot provide the solution, punishment, or condemnation because it's metaphysical and you literally cannot do it. So inviting non-religious people 
to support the religious communities, asking for charities from secular organizations. Much more difficult on their side because they cannot relate and cannot again, be in line with what you want. Compared to our side, we make it secular, we invite people in. The way for this is one. Because their debate and this discussion will cause more conflicts, inherently because it's open to the organization, nothing happens. Even if we cannot get away from the extremist idea, we take away the incentive to do anything extreme because their basic these needs are fulfilled. For all those reasons, come to the It is never explained. And B, why does it necessarily need to be done by the religious leaders to do these sorts of things? Why is it, or comparatively on our side, these things can be done through media, uh, through state, through police, which is going to, as they say, influence things like this, and so on. Uh, uh, it is not clear why, what the logic link is between church doing these sorts of things. And stuff like that. Then they go on to say, and they say, uh, these people did this because of uh, after effects, because the people get them into heaven and stuff like that. I find this largely contradictory to their point, their main point in their case. Notice that it is contradictory because you are portrayed as you have done this because you are poor, because of system discrimination and stuff like that. It is not that you have done this because you wanted to get into uh, heaven and stuff like that. But further, notice that on our side, you are going to get told by the Pope, by your religious leader, that if you do these sorts of things, if you attack these sorts of people, you are necessarily going to go to hell. On their side, you have to tell the whole community that it is justified because uh, he was caught and stuff like that, uh, further, uh, further down the line. Then they go on to say and, uh, uh, that the religion is really problematic because it is open to interpretation. Notice it is not a reality that religion is open to interpretation. First of all, when you learn about uh, being, how should I say, a religious leader, you are going to university where they teach you all sorts of things, how you, uh, as a religious leader, are going to, how should I say, uh, tell people what to do, uh, interpret things and stuff like that. Or secondly, you have a lot of checks and balances before actually being appointed as a religious leader. This means that people are going to watch you, how should I say, do uh, a serve, and uh, they are going to decide whether or not they should appoint you uh, for a religious leader. It is important, extremely important to this point, because on our side, uh, the prevention is done, uh, the country say on both sides, the prevention is done before the test. You are not that open to interpretation. However, on our side, that, that is also, how should I say, amplified because, uh, after these attacks. Because you are going to say to your community uh, why, why these sorts of issues uh, happen. Uh, you are going to, as a religious leader, going to reflect and feel guilty about this, this sort of question of the diet. And also, uh, interpreting, uh, how should we say, uh, uh, any interpretation that differs from the interpretation of your religious leader is simple. Therefore, I am not sure to what extent uh, their main uh, claim stands about religion being uh, so, how should we say, open and stuff like that. Uh, uh, notice has uh, also a certain issue uh, regarding face. Uh, the main version of proof is that this is going to be done that. That these, uh, how should we say, religious leaders are going to uh, explain well why on individual level this, uh, this uh, how should we say, person committed 
this sort of terrible acts and stuff like that. However, notice the, more, the, the biggest problem that uh, religion uh, institutions face. It is that their uh, uh, mental health nuance is really poor. Why is this so? Because first of all, they do not trust uh, these sorts of institutions. Secondly, they feel that only the God is the one that is disabled, not some sheep in, a, uh, in an office and stuff like that. Thirdly, mental health is, is often still uh, spilled into some notion, such as there is a demon inside of you. God is punishing you for some sort of sin and stuff like that. Neither on their side, you actually feel worse about yourself uh, because of these interpretations. Uh, you feel that the only, uh, only culture you can say, church can help you, and this uh, culture you say, uh, makes you opt out of certain uh, things which you would do on our side. This means not seeking help and so on and so on. Now, uh, why community based reason is much better for the prevention of these sorts of extremists and these sorts of accidents happen? First of all, uh, when these bad things happen, the whole community suffers because the perception of other people who are not religious is going to spin them. They are going to say, oh, these are matters. They are killing, how should I say, uh, they are killing different religions. They are killing LGBT people, and so on, which is necessarily going to make the whole community look bad, not just the religious leaders. Secondly, you feel bad uh, as a community that you did not prevent these extremists from doing so these sorts of things. This is a terrible thing, and it necessarily only happens on our side because on their side it is washed by some sorts of systematic discrimination, uh, injustice, and stuff like that. Secondly, religious leaders feel that they are the ones to blame on our side because notice on their side the guilt is spinned around. It is shown that uh, I, I, as a religious person, did not, how should I say, uh, am not to blame because this person interpreted these things, these sorts of pay. He is to blame. Society is to blame because he was poor, because he didn't have a great helper and stuff like that. On our side, this religious leader is going to say, I am to blame. I am terrible story. I am now going to show you the exact interpretation of these words so you don't mistake them that uh, then and stuff like that. Uh, you are also on our side always forced to how should I say uh, do this right uh, right uh, interpretation and stuff like that. And what is the compare? The guilt on their side is spread around. It is from religious leaders to the uh, individual that committed these sorts of terrible things. On our side, the whole community is to blame. Both the religious leaders and the community, because they did not prevent these sorts of issues. They did not tell you, uh, uh, how should I say, what the right interpretation is, and stuff like that. This is a terrible thing because uh, we can't have some of your facts on our side. The framing of the house goes against your engagement. Conservatives on your side of the house call really three executions. Bullshit. Why would news and pop culture work on your side? You guys will notice it is much different. When religious leaders say to you, if you do this, you are going to go to hell, then uh, the community, how should I say, denounce you and stuff like that. Because what is the hell is something that is internal. You are going to suffer them for eternity. On our side, we, how should I say, prevent all sorts of uh, these extremists actually, how should I say, doing these terrible acts and stuff like that. And also notice, on, on our side, uh, we are not the ones that are, how should I say, pushing the way onto that person. Because notice a crucial uh, these extremists did not kill all those people because they were religious, uh, because they were uh, poor. They killed all these uh, people because their interpretation of their own religion was bad, was mistaken, and stuff like that. Notice, we cannot maybe uh, eradicate uh, poverty and all sorts of societal issues. However, we can prevent future, future extremists and we can prevent future hate and allow the right interpretation for all those reasons. All, all.
are affected by information <laughs> overload. Often secular understanding is a function of how current society is operating. So everything that you see in current social media is going ahead and critiquing or creating discourse on what's happening right now. There is information overload at any given point of time. You compare that with religion. There's a stream of consistency. There's a stream of monotony. Every Sunday you go to church. Every Tuesday, I don't know, you go to like Ram Temple and things like that. There's a stream of consistency and that's what people make it. There's a beauty of religion and that's why it's like so easy to get and get hope from that and things like that. This means that social preferences are far more evolving than religious preferences are. And social preferences can be kept in account in comparison to religious preferences. The last thing I'm going to do is why subjective religious preferences are irreconcilable in, in nature. And note how this pushes opening opposition out here a little bit. Before that, goes. all religions have a religious obligation to solve poverty or other issues through charity or other methods, which are enforced through volume of religious rules, which we push on on our side. No, it's not an obligation. People do it out of a competition incentive. But what you know what competition incentive you're creating in opposition? Opening opposition, it's between sex themselves. The kind of like competing incentive that exists on CG is with other religions. That's a far more positive conception of it. When schisming is way more extreme, as you explain on your side of the house, that's when irreconcilable is. Three reasons why preferences are irreconcilable. A, it is history. The purpose of what religion serves, like what other functional religious has in your life, is connected to your history. Was it a way to preserve imperial power if you are from the royal that time? Or was it a way of survival, such as South America and liberation theology and things like that? You hold a lot of cultural value to it. Secondly, within geography and community, right? It's difficult to change customs and all of these things overnight, and there's a lot of stigma if you opt out. That's why different echoing or different like religious expect like the messaging is even difficult to come by in the first place because of how hard these preferences are set in stone. Now compare this with how social or secular understandings are like function. We are taught in schools that too much like whatever the British Empire did was wrong. There's open acceptance of things that we have learned through humanity and learned through the passage of time. This is far more different. It's now seen as it was seen as a pioneer if you go ahead and challenge state establishment or authoritarianism and things like that. All of this proves that religious differences are irreconcilable, but state differences are far more reconcilable. This proves why often happens, but secondly, I've told you why religion has to be unique to it, only doesn't, only half out of it. Thank you, Chief Government Member, for that speech. I have now asked for my opposition member. Uh, yes. Thank you. Great. I'm going to start it. Three, two, one. Gov tends to say that interpretation of religion can always be interpreted in an extreme way. We agree with that, but the question is where people are more likely to choose the only interpretation. What we will prove is why the arms of the house, how few people will choose the extreme interpretation compared to their of the house because the treatment of discriminated on their side is ineffective and the treatment of our side is effective. First, in characterization, what we are talking about is spreading an interpretation of religious texts that will prevent people from committing terrorist acts. This looks like religious leaders who are emphasizing that terrorism does not lead to a martyrdom, condemning violence and loss of innocent lives. They are allied to negative consequences in the art and the art life to kill people. They are likely to promote the message of peace and tolerance. They are likely to implement educational initiatives and engage like communities to collectively reject extremism and embrace compound values. In order to explain why the treatment of our side is much more effective compared to their treatment, we first we will explain what is the motivation that causes people to perform extreme actions that was based. In most, in most cases, they did not like either or. It is a mix between the religious motive and the individual motive, which means that you have you are both or a poor and let's say also interpret your religious book in an extreme way. However, though, the religious motive is much stronger than the individual motive, though there should be a there should be a prioritization and uh, on the religious motive. Why is Two structural reasons. First, irrational religious motivation. The belief that extremist actions will lead to divine uh, uh, rewards, such as like preaching habit or behaving behavior with a with a high power, motivates individuals in an irrational and like in, in, in an irrational manner. That is to say, religious doctrines often emphasize the importance of faith and unquestioning devotion. In the context of extremism, individuals are likely to convince that their actions, no matter how extreme they are, are a direct path of spiritual rewards. It means that the irrational nature of this motivation makes individuals more willing to undertake extreme measures without rational consideration of the consequences. Secondly, they are attributing something better than their, than, their, than their own self. That is to say, religion often instills a sense of purpose and devotion to a cause along.
closer than yourself, which makes you much more willing to feel suffering for the sake of your religious beliefs. We think that with extremely extremist ideologies tend to frame their goals as not about a grander narrative of like or a divine plan. It means that people who are who ascribe deep religious meaning to their actions are likely to perceive their sacrifice, including personal suffering, as a noble and transcendent pursuit. This leads to a higher purpose of repeating and a divine mandate can override individual concerns, which creates a possible part of motivation that extends beyond your personal interests. How exciting work on our Sunday house? Uh, uh, three things to say here. One, religious authority and moral guidance. Notice, the moral guidance which uh, religious leaders provide carries, carries weight and legitimacy in the eyes of the police believers. If you uniquely follow an added group in the equivocally, denounce extremism and promote a peaceful interpretation of religious teachings, followers are likely to reconsider their support for extremist ideologies. We think that their ability to shape more perspectives and actually leads to eradicating extremes as a, 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 a like ideological uh, uh, cost. Secondly, notice when religious leaders actively promote a message of tolerance, uh, of their coexistence and that kind of things, they are likely to lead to the establishment of <coughs> works that reject extremism. This collective solidarity within the community when we when this guy of the religious leaders are actually is actually uh, likely to marginalize experience and discourage and, and the potential recruits and stuff like that. We think that this can be forced by religious leaders, which is a, a very strong force in eradicating the experience from within. Thirdly, notice educational initiatives and counter narratives. That is to say, when they actively engage in educational uh, efforts, these religious leaders are likely to address misinterpretations for religious texts and provide projects that counter extremist ideologies, we think that this is all like uh, creating like uh, things like critical thinking or encouraging believers to, uh, to question extremist narratives and embrace like a more tolerant interpretation of their faith and stuff like that. Now I want to about the government. OG and CG they will never get the end of deal with religious interpretations because it will always be there in the post historical bit. Yes, but there is a spectrum between extreme interpretation and moderate interpretation, and we move more people to the moderate end of the spectrum than of their sort of house. Therefore, we created a, a real delta in the extreme actions. On our side, people are more likely to connect with the other interpretations for two structural reasons. First, people look to the rabbi as a point of God. They want they went to a specific mass from a young age. If it is a very extreme mass, then its followers will not change in, 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 in any way. At least in the mass uh, that, are in the, that are in the middle, we replace the accepted interpretation with a moderate interpretation. That is to say, the delta is mostly on the, is mostly on the class that are in the middle, and it's not that they can't be between extreme and the moderate. <laughs> Secondly, throwing the way life we're having is a very big concession. People go do it unless they are 100% sure about it. It is not that we apply 3% doubt that the hand is, uh, is going to happen, then it, uh, then it will stop a lot of crimes. On the other side, when there is a focus on individual circumstances, when you deal with religious extremism, it won't be effective for two reasons. First, the condemnation the will be very loud. We must emphasize how these are poor people who enter this situation against the will. These are people who are victims of the government, of the environment they were going into, not something they are to blame. There is a feeling of empathy for them, but still, they have a strong religious motive which does not change, and therefore, this continues to make them perform the extreme actions out of the sense of religious beauty. Secondly, because the religious motive remains on their side, because the leaders do not approach the situation in a religious way, so what happens is that they feel validation for their street beings. They say to themselves that the chief driver in my community didn't tell me that this religious approach is wrong. He is my highest authority, and if he does not condemn the right thing, it's probably fine to do this. People have confirmation bias, and this silence on the part of the religious leaders makes them think that their are because that is the correct right one, and because the religious motive is much stronger than the individual motive, and they are expected to continue their extreme actions. Yes, probably. Um, you spent the entire part of your extension explaining why people are already attached to whatever interpretation they have. That means they are less likely to believe the moderate interpretation. On OG, at least we reduce the incentive to be extreme because we fulfill their basic interests. Thank you very much. You didn't explain to our how training. If you're talking about a very extreme must, it won't change on either side, but there is a spectrum between a more moderate people must and the or more, more moderate people and the more extreme people. We are talking about the masks in the middle that are that, 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 that are close towards three ideologies. But right now, when the leader of all the communities actually when the leader of the community actually tell you that this is wrong, that you cannot do it, something have a lot more to do us. On your side of the house, when the leader doesn't do any of this, you're much more likely to get an identity, you're much more likely to get extremism on your side of the house. This means that the treatment of a religious extremism on your side will not be effective for treatment religious actions, and, and then on our side of the house, 
feeling to be a baby. Since it is the only thing that is the way that the doctor will make it I don't need to explain why it's important. For all of those reasons, please, it's pretty good. Thank you to your opposition member. I would now like to invite the government to switch. So if it's a religious leader in a say in a neighborhood or in the colony, you probably have taught something to all to the people who come to your church every week for let's say 20 or 30 years, right? Now suddenly you see extremism rising in your community. What do you do? You have to take accountability of the action and have to say that I was wrong and you have to now overturn that interpretation into something totally different to introduce interpretation. This is the problem that exists on their side. Or oh, opposition men just never explain. Why is someone like to go ahead and just dislodge the reputation they have built over so much time to go ahead and, and implement this thing in a good and a positive manner in most instances? The fundamental assumption of the function is also this. He said I will promote tolerance. But to promote tolerance, you have literally go against the teaching that you have done for so long because your teachings are the one that, that pushed people into some more racism in the first place. In most instances, you would have to do this in a bad manner and you would not like to go ahead and reach the point of tolerance in the first place. Reason for this is very simple, right? You, you say, instead of going ahead and think that I was responsible, you say that some other sect is responsible and those teachings percolated into our community and that's why you're going ahead and creating racism in the first place. But right? you take accountability for your own actions and like this, like this launch your own reputation as a leader, then you square the shift again onto some other sect within the religion and say that that interpretation is wrong and not ours. So even if I say that it's somewhat skewed, it's not that much skewed, probably the other, other sect something that's problem, problematic. That means this is going to be religious on a massive scale because people never tend to quite teach about accountability. Secondly, not that in, in most instances, like on our side of the house, comparative, what happens is that the people just show up and to the state. So, I'm only going to tell you that, that the problems of secular issues are from the all state issues, right? State what and all these things in the first place. So, on our side of the house, what we want to do is to say that, oh, we were not at fault. And the state who did not push all the poverty, the state who did not go ahead and give you the right kind of things. So, we are going to go and do that. That increases the popularity. It's important to go and do this in a positive manner, in a good way, as opposed to doing it in a negative manner on their side of the house. So, the opposition response is first. Yes, isn't that if you validate your actions by not questioning the religion outside of outside government, you get to have a confirmation by and you get to go ahead and keep on repeating the cycle. The problem is on, on their side, when you attack the core reason why you're going ahead and, and, and committing these crimes, people don't suddenly accept you or accept the kind of reason you're proposing. Other than you tend to double down on their actions, they tend to increase the kind of extremism that they have because they are not so protective about their culture. Imagine that you have been indoctrinated by some kind of like, interpretation for all their life, your family follows it, your parents follow it, right? And suddenly the leader starts to say, oh, the interpretation is wrong. You don't suddenly go ahead and say, oh, fine, you were right, the interpretation is wrong. They tend to be more protective about it because something you have grown up with, right? So that at that moment, right, you tend to go ahead and engage in these things much more to prove a point that this is the right way to go ahead and live your life, as opposed to saying that, oh, it's fine, our my entire life is a lie, and I won't change our mentality. So for people on their side, and this is going to close the opposition, that why would people go ahead and reach a tipping point when they can reverse the kind of brainwashing that they have had for so many generations, now uh, instead of going ahead and the resorting to doubling down so that they can go point to other sectors, and that's the issue on the opposition. I mean, even a position extension when there's a bit very simple, right? We tell you like two things. One, we tell you that we will opt in into God's solution much more because that's the logic behind what the opening of it says. OG tells you there's a host of benefits in when you talk about solutions that are secular because a lot of people are separate as such even have targeted approaches. They don't tell you why people who are indoctrinated, people who are extremists, why will they opt in into this in the first place? That's the logic to cancel the opening of this is not wrong. Three reasons for science tells you. One, we tell you that on our side of the house, the trust in religions 
remains intact. Because the religious leader is not going against their own reputation. So yet when they are trying to maintain some other institutions in the communist state, so the relationship that you have with the leader stays intact and you trust them for much more. Secondly, we tell you that it goes in line with what the state has already performing. So you have confirmation bias from the state and it's echoed by religion. So you have better collaboration between these two entities. A lot of NGOs, a lot of state funded resources can also go into real just pushing tight down mental health in the first place. Thirdly, when you attack your own core religion as a religious leader, if you give order to other communities or other religions to go ahead and weaponize this against you in most instances, right? They go ahead and tell you that your religious texts are the problem and that needs to widespread spiritual stigma across this kind of community. So if one person of community goes and commits an act of terrorism, the entire community gets stigmatized because of the kind of culture that because of the commonality that exists between these things. Uh, between these kind of interpretations on all these all these individuals. On our side of the house, you give less order to the, to the other communities to represent the narrative against you and push back against you. So you have a more effective vision on the house because in the interim you don't get pushed back from those kind of communities. And that's the reason why people opt in much more on our side of the house, right? Also, I want to take the opening option. Opening option says that this is the, the only engagement we have with governments. They say that we can go ahead and have independent like, sort of avenues to solve mental health and there are other issues possible. Opening government falls into the staff because they don't answer my religions are the tipping point to go and implement these solutions in a secular segmented health, right? Two things they explain on this. One, on our side of the house, we explain that the framing of why people come to religion in the first place is likely to be this that when they are at the psychological lowest point, they are most susceptible to solutions that are more targeted towards them, right? Opening government like, answer this question of why religion become a tipping point. This is the reason why they become a tipping point, and because in most instances, you come to religion at religions or you go to a temple and you're actually feeling that you want to learn something from this religion. I don't know what happened to the comparator. When you have independent media and then you have news outlets saying you have written as a problem, you're not always susceptible to the idea because you don't go to that framework for a paper with that same kind of mindset. You over you have to watch these. But suddenly you see how someone going ahead and saying, hey, but that is an issue. Why would I go and accept this thing in the first place with the question of opening original an answers? And that engages with their best case scenario. Before I go on, post. So it is all they have duties and actions which result in real life circumstances. But this is also not as important when dealing with tensions and ethnic like the differences between different religions that are both powerful and human sections. So on your side, when you tell people that my religion was a problem, and the other religions see this and they're questioning your own belief system, then at that point you give them all order, like explain, to go and attack your religion and tell that you were wrong and stigmatize the entire community who reads the same kind of books. Right? Because now you're like, that's if one person is going and going to do this, it's only everyone who's a terrorist. That's the stigma that exists on your side of the house. Much more it leads to more tension with religions on the on your side, right? On our side, people opt into this policy much more or like much easily, primarily because they're more susceptible. And that's exactly where religions become a tipping point to enforce the state's secular mechanism, right? Secondly, on our side, we just increase the capacity that religions have to go into institutions. Because you increase collaboration between those institutions that are that don't really want to interfere in religion, in religion but would now do that because of the targeting from that structural inequality that even they want to find balance in the first place. So most things are like want to solve poverty. If religion say that we also want to solve poverty, the collaboration is increasing because you are working on a common front and not something that's digressed from each other. Most states would want to interfere in religion on their side of the house, right? That means that they are relying on just the religion going ahead and doing these things in the first place. I don't think of opposition there of points out why it's not a good matter, only we tell you that it's not a negative matter and why are our side of the too much worse. Better for all those reasons. Thank you for your presentation. <laughs> and to conclude the debate, I invite the opposition whip speaker. Okay, I'm on the time order. Am I on the Yep, you are. Okay, so let's talk in the first time being relevant. And one second. I'm starting in three, two, one. I will start with the battle of CG and then I'll explain why we went with the clash of domestic syndrome. First, CG said that we cannot start to change religions. Two only buttons for that. First, the religious leaders did not have to say he was wrong. He touched me to focus on different things on different manners. That is, if previous, in 10 years previously, the religious leaders looked at some terrorists and they said he was going to, to heaven, and after 10 years, he still uh, now with another terror attack. He stopped uh, saying uh, the new one is going to heaven. And if he will get executed, he will say that the, the, the circumstances are different now. He wouldn't say I was wrong in that uh, test. This is this. But see, even if religious leaders, uh, uh, religious leaders say they are wrong, we think that there are big capacity of religious persons to catch up to the contradictions and to, uh, to, to believe in contradictions is extreme. We are talking about doctors who, who, who go to the mosque and believe that the prophet has spread in a more than finger. We are talking about people who, 
No, no, I didn't understand the pillar, sorry. In, in, your, in your side, you, in the pillar attacks are going to bring that, to, to go to bring that, is, is the bad, bad decisions in the, in, the, in, the, in the region, and they are very for that. But now let's engage with what other reasons for this. Only that say that we will give money to poor people. Not that charity exists in both sides of the world. Charity is the main source of religion. It's, it's the whole job is spread messages about how you go to heaven to, 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 to heaven if you if, if give, give good actions. The folk psychologists exist in both sides of the world because we want to, to, to heal poor people. We want to make a good society as a religion. Therefore, they, 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 they have exist in both sides. But uh, CG then said that, okay, we have. Uh, we, uh, sorry, but psychologists, uh, psychologists won't work either way. What is true? Because we are talking about psychologists cannot check the people in terms of players. That is, the only way to fix their your willingness to do a terror attack or not is to test you in the time when you heard about your dead mother and you said a whole card against the shooting. The psychologist can, can, cannot deal with these triggers. It does not mean, it does not matter how much psychologists you have on your side, it, does, it won't help you. But our side, the source it will be making extremism, the, the source that people grew up on from child, age zero, is changing. Therefore, when you have these triggers, you are not regretting to extremism. Please see more. Thank you for your group. Thank you to all speakers for that debate. Uh, everybody will cross board if they can. Uh, yeah, no, no, thank you very much. Thank you.